In this video, we're going to be talking about brain tumors and some of the common imaging scenarios you might run into. We'll talk about how to form a differential diagnosis for a brain tumor based on the imaging findings. There are a couple of common clinical scenarios you may run into in radiology. Being able to make an intelligent differential makes you a better radiologist than someone else. There's kind of a joke that a neurologist can tell you that there's a tumor there. Uh, don't get mad out there, neurologists. Uh, I, I know you guys know a lot about uh, radiology as well, but uh, it's always fun to poke a little fun at other specialties. One of the common things you may run into, or probably one of the most common, is going to be a solitary enhancing parenchymal mass. So you see an enhancing mass, you only have one. you got to come up with your differential. Uh, your differential is going to be glioblastoma, metastases, lymphoma, and maybe abscess, although uh, you should be able to tell the difference in an abscess and a tumor based on the diffusion centrally. Abscesses are going to have centrally bright DWI, which is from the pus. Uh, infection, again, you can have unusual infections, but that's going to be less common. So if you're really hit on these top three, GBM, MET, and lymphoma, that's going to cover more than 95% of your cases for a solitary enhancing parenchymal mass. Another common scenario you're going to run into is your multiple enhancing parenchymal masses. That's going to be when you have a similar situation to before, but there's more than one. We've seen that throughout this lecture. Your differential is similar, but the order changes a little bit. When you have multiple masses, you have to favor metastases. Lymphoma can also involve multiple areas throughout the brain. Glioblastomas can be multifocal, but it's going to be less likely. So you have kind of the same differential, but your order is a little different. Um, abscess, again, is kind of similar to what we were saying before. Infection, of course, is always a consideration. But again, these top three are really your, your main things. If you can tell someone that's likely metastases, uh, that can really help them uh, narrow their diagnosis and continue their workup more effectively. Minimally enhancing cortical tumors we've talked about as well. There's a short differential for those. These tend to be the well-defined tumors uh, like DNET, ganglioglioma, and PXA. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between the appearance here and you may not be able to tell the difference. If you have ill-defined cortical tumors, uh, then you gotta think about low-grade gliomas like the low-grade astrocytomas, uh, grade two and grade three astrocytomas or oligodendrogliomas. When you have a cyst and a nodule, this is a classic radiology appearance that you'll hear about a lot. It's sort of a keyword. You may see it on tests. Uh, people are, tend to be looking for a couple of specific things. The most common one is pilocytic astrocytoma. So that's going to be common in children and young adults, uh, often in the posterior fossa. Ganglioglioma can also have cysts and a nodule. They're more likely to be in the temporal lobes and supratentorial. Hemangioblastomas are frequently in the posterior fossa. They typically have uh, blood vessels and flow voids that can help you identify those. Uh, they're also more common in patients that have von Hippel-Lindau. Finally, PXAs or pleomorphic xanthroastrocytomas can have a cyst and a nodule. So this is kind of your differential, what you're thinking about if you see a cystic and nodular lesion. Finally, Think about how uh, primary brain tumors are arranged by their cell of the origin and WHO grade. Again, astrocytes can have the astrocytomas, which range from grade two to grade four. Glioblastomas are the most common astrocytomas and the most common primary brain tumors. Oligodendrogliomas must have a 1P19Q codeletion. They must have an IDH mutation. They come in grade two, grade three flavors. And there are a few genetic markers which are important for knowing the prognosis. IDH mutation and MGMT methylation are associated with better prognosis. So it's definitely good to know if patients have those. Finally, a lot of the low-grade tumors can look the same. We've talked about that. Uh, Pilocytic astrocytoma, DNAT, ganglioglioma, PXA, they can all be uh, very similar looking. Use some of the features to try to help you make a differential but you know, ultimately it's not going to make a difference. Finally, there are some other common intracranial masses, lymphoma, metastases, and meningioma. You have to be on the lookout for those. They can mimic uh, the masses we've already talked about, the primary brain tumors, and uh, you want to be on the lookout for those. 
as one last parting word of advice, if you can give an intelligent differential for these tumors, that's going to make you a better radiologist. It's going to make you more useful to referring providers. And in general, you're going to be uh, better regarded if you can put these in an intelligent order and try to tell people uh, what it's more likely to be. Finally, I'll just part with this. This is a picture I took in San Francisco a few years ago. You see there's a produce delivery truck. I'll just have you take a look at the driver's seat here. Oh, it's a dog like sitting in the driver's seat, like looking like it's going to drive. I swear that's not photoshopped. Thanks for your attention today. Up next, we'll look at a couple of bonus cases. So we'll just recap some of these findings that we've seen um, and uh, solidify them a little bit. If you're interested in more videos, uh, please check out our channel or check out our website at learnerradiology.com.